All right, now, this is a little, this is Guillaume the Ninth of Poitiers. This is a Christian poet. Are you ready to go? I don't know what we're going to do with this. <laughs> but this is, a, this is a kind of poem that even the Christians were writing under the influence of the Arabs. You hear me, do you? Let's watch the sweetness of this thing. Okay, go ahead. In the great sweetness of the spring, woods turn green, and the birds sing on, each in his own Latin. <laughs> in the new way we all know, then it's right that each man comes close to what he desires most. But no messenger arrives, no letter from the place of goodness and sweetness, and so my body does not sleep, it does not laugh, and I hold myself in until I know where we are, if this will go as I wish it to go. Our love moves in this way, like a branch of the hawthorn tree that holds to its trunk and trembles in the rain all night, in the cold, until morning, when the sun expands all through the green leaves and the branches. It reminds me of that other morning, our sweet war we brought to an end. And she gave me as a gift. She gave me a gift so great, her faithful valley and her ring. I want my God to let me live, to have my hands beneath her cloak again. <laughs> we do the last dance again? Yeah? Our last two. Our love moves in this way, like a branch of the hawthorn tree that holds to its trunk, and it trembles in the rain all night in the cold until morning, when the sun expands all through the green leaves and the branches. It reminds me of that other morning, our sweet war we brought to an end, and she gave me a gift so great, her faithful valley and her ring. I want my God to let me live, to have my hands beneath her cloak again. <laughs> Wait, one more sentence. <laughs> I am not fond of all this Latin that parts me from my lovely friend, for I agree with that saying, the briefest sermon never ends. <laughs> Some people treat love with words, but we have the bread and we have the knife. A lot of talk about eating, isn't it? We have the bread and we have the knife. Thank you. Isn't he doing well? Yeah. All right, I think we'll do one more of these love poems. The love poems tell you that the, the culture was very much in his heart. They don't come out of nothing. So that's the beauty of the thing. And uh, this is the Countess of D. Uh, she was Christian, but it was it moved all through that area. And the um, the, the great things that we talk about, uh, the troubadours and all of that, they follow out of this Muslim love of of uh, secret nights and joy and all that. The Countess of D, she was a <clears throat> For a while now, a certain night has caused me great distress. And I want it known once and for all how excessively I've loved him. These will all have tunes connected with them. And they'll all be sung at parties and stuff like that. See, you couldn't name too many names. <laughs> For a while now, a certain night has caused me great distress, and I want it known, once and for all, how excessively I've loved him. 
Yet I've been betrayed on pretext of not giving him my love. And ever since in bed or dressed, my life's been one of grief. How I would like to hold him one night in my naked arms and see him joyfully use my body as a pillow. For I am more in love with him than Flora with blush fleur. And I'd offer him my heart, my love, my mind, my eyes, and my life. Go ahead, do it. Yeah. More. <laughs> into it now. My handsome friend, gracious and charming, when will I hold you in my power? Oh, that I might lie with, with you one night and kiss you lovingly. My handsome friend, gracious and charming, when will I hold you in my power? Oh, that I might lie with you one night and kiss you lovingly. Know how great is my desire to treat you as a husband. But you must promise me to do whatever I may wish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can clap for her. 